<laughs> a very, very long, long time ago, there was a man and a woman, and they were madly, madly in love with each other. But the peculiar thing about their love was, they had never, ever seen each other. How could they love each other if they haven't even met? That doesn't make any sense. Do you want to hear this story or not? Well... Like I said, they were madly, madly in love with each other, and yet loved one another with more passion than a passion fruit, more heart than a heart-shaped box filled with chocolate hearts, and more burning desire than an adolescent teen with the lipstick of his first kiss still smeared upon his lips. They, well, you get the idea. They lived far across a great expanse of ocean, where every morning they would stand staring across at each other with hopeful hearts and dreams of their togetherness. The young man would gather stones, writing messages of endearment on each one, just before skipping it all the way across the ocean to his lover's home. She would do the same, only using small fish to carry the letters across the sea. The lovers did this every day, growing more and more in love with each other. Until one day a great darkness came over the woman's village, a monster made of solid metal erupted out of the ground and causing chaos, imprisoning the villagers and burning down their peaceful town. The woman cried for her lover, help me, help me, but her lover was far across the ocean and did not hear her cries. The woman knew it was surely the end, but she knew how much her lover loved her and how badly he wanted to marry her, and how commitment wasn't an issue for him. And she would just stare at the moon at night and know her lover was gonna come and rescue her. She didn't even have to tell him because he already knew. And he dropped everything and screamed, I love you, I love you so much. I just wanna settle down and make babies with you like normal adults. And then he ran after her. The ocean was pumped. Start kicking the shit out of that one bro. Fucking waves and shit. <laughs> Just like that one movie, Castaway. Ah, the ocean ain't fucking breakfast. And so the hero sank. He sank for what felt like an whole eternity. Until finally he was at the bottom of the ocean. And there, at the bottom of the ocean, he knew that all hope was lost for him. He knew that his lungs would soon be filled with water. Lots and lots of water. And there at the bottom of the ocean he would die. Alone and cold, and without ever once seeing the face of his true love. The end. For now. That's it? He can't just die. Well, tonight, he's dead. Tomorrow, who knows? I get some rest. He didn't really die, he just came really close to dead. Right before he closed his eyes to die, a mermaid came to save his life. The mermaid swam up to the hero, encircling him with hope, and whispered into his ear, Don't worry, brave one, for today you will die, but there remains a light to your darkness. It is too late for you now as the life fades from your eyes. Death will soon take his grip, and with him you will descend to the underworld. But I know many secrets of death's ways, and can tell you how to escape in exchange you will do a favor for me. No sooner did the hero agree with the mermaid's request, than he was drawn deep down into the dark underbelly of life. He was scared, but he held true to his request, even as death danced all around him in a fiery blaze. He was in search of the mermaid's true home. The son of death himself, the serpent king and hideous giant snake, which roamed endlessly through the twisting taverns of the underworld, always in search of his Meanwhile, the beautiful princess locked inside the monster's grasp, could no longer smell her lover's scent in the air, could no longer feel his life amongst the trees and across the ocean. She knew he was dead, and without him, could go no longer. All she needed was a sign, something 
anything telling her that her true love still lived. But no sign came. So she rose the knife to her chest, and just before she took her own life, a bunny hippy hopped right up to her cage and told her. Her lover will soon live and be in her arms once again. Wait, where'd that rabbit come from? So the princess was like, chill, and the prince had no problem getting the snake prince, dude, but like, he still had to beat the devil in a game? That was a trick the mermaid was telling him about. So they played the devil in the game, and they totally win, the devil's pretty mad, but he has to let them go anyways because of the devil code. So they escape, and the snake dude thanks him, and they're like super chill now, and they leave the underworld, and he wakes up washed up on the same island as his girlfriend at last, Dan. Corbin, it's time to go. So he runs through the village and it's destroyed and he sees this girl and she's like help help and he's running towards her but the monster the big metal head monster just grabs the guy and he's like totally gonna crush him and kill him for sure and it's totally the end. Then he bites the monster's leg and kills it. Wait not the man the snake the snake from earlier came to save the man out of the underworld and then he kills the monster for the guy and that's it. That's it? Yeah the monster's dead the snake owed him one saved the hero. Well, it's kind of close, I guess. I think maybe I like your version even better. But tell me what really happened. Your version. Well, it's all pretty much the same, I guess, except for you got it backwards. It was the princess that you 